So I have started doing chakra readings and realized that I had not done one for myself. <laughs> why not? And why not to put it up as an example? So I did just that. I laid out some cards for my chakras. Um, the immediate thing that's that stands out is there's only one major arcana card it is reversed and the other thing that really stands out is there's a lot of reversals but they don't feel uh, they don't feel critical I'm not you know as a chakra reading it's like I can handle this I can handle this this is okay um, you know, there's one that's kind of amusing to me. Um, it's probably the only one that's striking me as really curious and problematic is um, even it's the Seven of Swords for my throat chakra. That's I'm I'm not quite getting that really, and so I'll have to explore that a little bit as I go along. Maybe it will clear up as I get into it. But it is reversed, meaning it's an influence that's going out, which would be, nor it would generally, with the Seven of Swords, be considered a good thing. Okay. Down to the root chakra, number one. So my sense of security and belonging. Even though this card is um, reversed, the, the Four of Wands is such a positive card overall. I'm just not even going to fuss about it. Uh, if anything, I find this reassuring. It um, it shows, in a sense, more both more support and more security and stability than I would have maybe expected in that position. So uh, the Four of Wands depicting a celebration so maybe there's not as much as there could be um, and I'm not going to fault others with that. I'm going to fault myself with that that maybe I should be engaging um, and celebrating where I'm at more than I do and appreciating and celebrating the stability I do have but again that, that's a really um, Overall, it's such a lovely, positive card. I'm just going to take that as reassurance and uh, not worry too much about it. It would be nicer if it was more developed. Four is still on the low end of the development scale, but that's okay. Like I said, lovely card, really, to have anywhere, even reversed, so I'm, no complaints there. Then my sacral chakra. Um, this is not too surprising to have here. So the sacral chakra being about um, emotional well-being, sex life, um, generative powers in terms of creativity and things like that. Um, I think in, in this situation this is referring very much to me physically and the reason why I say that this is understandable with the moon card reversed here is that I had a hysterectomy get going on nearly a year ago now 10 months ago but I'm, I'm having healing issues um, not super serious but enough to feel like that area is a little bit shut down um, and I'm trying to think in terms of so the moon um, being a sense of mystery or illusion. You know what? I just really find myself taking this physically. I, I really think because when the a major arcana is reversed, a lot of times it refers back to um, the previous card, which as in the previous card has not been um, completely resolved and the previous card is um, the star 
And the star is a card of both hope and healing. It's about replenishment um, and cycles, just and the moon is also about cycles. And um, I think I am still in a healing cycle, and goodness knows how long it will take. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not going to judge that. I'm going to let it be. Moon reversed, so be it. We will be patient. We will be patient. I don't even feel like I need to look up any sort of um, solution to that. It, it seems appropriate for where I'm at right now. Now the Queen of Pentacles reversed in the solar plexus. I'm not super thrilled about that, but um, again, it's kind of like the Four of Wands. Well, you know the Queen of Pentacles, she's pretty strong. Even if she's reversed, I'm not going to be too... Um, I'm not going to fret over much about it, but whenever the court cards, the higher court cards like these, the Kings or Queens, are reversed, um, I do like to think about, well, how do we get them upright? How do we, um, how do we fix that? I don't, I don't like to see them reversed and thwarted. So the solar plexus chakra is kind of your self-esteem, um, kind of action in the world. You know, things that affect our livelihood, so our work life is often centered here. So again, really, the Queen being is Queen of Pentacles, really strong card to have in terms of work life. But she's reversed, and to me that indicates kind of some instability. Um, not being able to accomplish everything she wants to accomplish. And um, in a sense, I, I see this connected to the moon reversed because um, the Queen of Pentacles likes to have her, part of her security is um, having control of her immediate surroundings. Um, you know, she's the kind of person who likes to feel that she has all of her ducks in a row and everything's planted on time and everything is thriving. And um, I have not been able to address that um, area of my life very much. And so, yes, when I look at either my house or my yard, again, because I've been going through a process of healing, uh, yeah, my self-esteem is not real up there right now. Um, so I, I am feeling that impact. And so, she is somebody who it wouldn't hurt me to draw some extra cards around and say, well, how do I help her? I think that this is a matter of time, just like the moon card is a matter of time for me. Um, the healing is clearly taking its own time, not going by any schedule I'd like to set it on. Um, and I am improving, so... But, you know... Why not draw a few cards around it? I'll do that later. See if I get any good suggestions. I, su I suspect that part of it is a matter of delegating. Okay, the next one really amused me when I saw it. And again, even though it's reversed, it's actually a fairly positive, more positive card than I would have expected to have here at the moment. Um, is the heart chakra. Okay, affection, um, giving and receiving love, the capacity to trust. Um, it's a lot of people in this particular situation. It's um, I think it's responding to um, romantic involvements, um, especially with the Knight of Cups, who I think of as being the um, the romantic seeker. 
the seeker of romantic attachments and, and to some extent idealistic goals and things like that. So um, seeing this in the reversed is um, amusing because I really do feel like I'm in a hiatus um, as far as romance is concerned right now. Um, I'm keeping my cups to myself, <laughs> let's just put it that way, for right now. Um, but, again, uh, he's still a nice character to see there. You know, it's, it's much better than a lot of other... Because it's an inherently, to me, for uh, somebody who is seeking uh, or eventually would like to find a life partner, just having this here still after some disappointments, I think is a very is a very positive thing to have here. So, hello, Knight of Cups. I know you're reversed. You'll have your time in the future. We're just sorting some things out right now. Other priorities, and we'll let you go back out. Um, so. I'm, I'm not going to complain about the Knight of Cups. I think that's, like I said, I'm actually pleasantly surprised <laughs> that I still have enough seeking in me. Um, and I have, I have not completely admitted defeat, just on a hiatus, turning backwards, nourishing myself, not, not seeking elsewhere. All right, so now we've reached the problematic throat chakra. So let me delve into my friend, the Seven of Swords, because this card has meant so many different things in so many different readings and comes up relatively frequently in my readings. And I have just always been astounded at the number of different things it can mean. On the face of it, it's thievery. Somebody taking all of your swords, no, five of seven, a bunch of your swords, for their own purposes. So what I'm seeing this as now is a matter of depleting resources, sneaky depletion of resources. And what's left are, are two swords. Sometimes those, and why I'm thinking about that is because sometimes those two swords are actually more important than the ones that are being left, or excuse me, the ones that are being taken. I think I'm going to look at it this way. So this is throat chakra, expression, and it's reversed. So this is an influence that's leaving. I think I'm going to look at it this way. spent a lot of energy and resources um, in both job search and even in the job I currently have um, in terms of throat chakra you know it's um, I teach English as a second language on the lower level and so there's just a tremendous amount of speaking 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 and There's, um, there is a sense that my, my abilities have not kind of been 
Acknowledged, certainly, yes. I can't complain in that regard. But that it's kind of like a leakage. <laughs> that there's... Um, that I'm not building... I'm not building... There's a depletion of things in that environment. that my um, speaking and writing and that all of those abilities that I've been using kind of for other people's purposes um, instead of my own and have become depleted sort of and so the fact this is another one that it wouldn't hurt me to pull some extra cards around to see well, what what is it about and how it's it's a influence that's passing so it's going out so I'm glad to see that, but I, I would like a better understanding of it. But I'm pretty sure it has to do with how I've um, used my resources and I, um, my ability to communicate who's benefiting from it um, and how am I giving it away um, without just compensation. Um, how am I letting it be stolen? Okay, so these are um, interesting things for me to think about and it's probably related even to the Queen of Pentacles to some because she's about resources too um, to some extent so I'm seeing those two as really connected and I also see the throat chakra and this issue of resources um, Many people think of the swords also as intellectuals. It can also be intellectual resources um, as being connected to the Page of Wands. And so I think the Page of Wands here is sort of some healing energy for that and maybe why part of the reason that that's exiting is because I do feel that this endeavor that I'm engaged in now the card reading is um, a more appropriate, straight on rewarding um, use of those swords that that guy's making off with. <laughs> so, uh, so the page of wands is in my third eye and that's the area of, of imagination, intuition, um, kind of other knowing. It can also be about creativity. And the Page of Wands there is about messages. And it's also about new adventures. So this endeavor of card reading is about giving messages, right? It's about um, receiving and passing on messages from the cards and whatever source you want to imagine it comes from prior to that. Um, and it's a new it's a new venture that I do feel is going to be more rewarding for me in terms of a use of my speaking, my ability to speak and my intellectual capacities. Well, I won't say that. The teaching is challenging intellectually. I can't say that there's a misuse there. Um, and misuse is maybe the, long, is the wrong word. It's not, in any case, you know, I actually love my teaching. Um, but I, I do feel that I am being used without kind of being fully used and fully compensated there. So, So we have the Page of Wands. I think that's I think that's very appropriate. Perfectly happy to have the page there um, for my third my third eye, or brow chakra. Um, then we have for the Crown Chakra. I'm not going to go into that third eye because I think it's just terribly obvious <laughs> to me what it is. the The Crown Chakra is an interesting card 
because this is you know you're a person's connection to spirituality source of divine universality is kind of where I would think of it um, the broader broader humanity broader broader sense of community let's say more universal sense of community as well as kind of universal spirit and the ten of wands is normally um, a card of completion And it's usually about work, completing a certain kind of work. And so when it's reversed, I think of um, it's time to let go of those burdens, you releasing those burdens. But the funny thing is, is I have not felt that I've had burdens. And so that's why I'm not thinking that that is quite what this is getting at. Or maybe I need to ask myself, have I had burdens <laughs> that I'm not aware of? Um, I mean, certainly, you know, I have more domestic burdens, and which the ones would make a much more sense in terms of. Um, but in the, in the crown chakra, what are my burdens in the crown chakra? Or what am I needing to release? Or this is why it's sometimes a good idea to have someone else read your cards <laughs> because you're too close to your own situation to really get something. So I'm looking at it in the upright. He's taking, he's all of the things he's gathered. Oh, I get it. But why is it reversed? All right, I'll tell you what it is first, and then we'll try to figure out what it is. It does help when you have a reversed card for anybody who's on it, to, <laughs> to turn it upright and look at it and start asking questions that way. Um, the ones are about life experience. It's about gathering experience, going out and getting experience. It's a lot of what the, the whole wand journey from um, ace on is very much about gathering experience. And um, I'm just thinking again about the reversal. One of the things that's interesting to do when you have reversed cards is to look at the graphic dynamic and how it changes. And I'll talk about that in a minute in this card. Okay. So what I'm seeing here now is I'm talking about the wands as being experience, gathering experience. This is a person who, it's kind of like harvest time, gathering in the wands and bringing them home, bringing them in. Um, and so this is gathered experience here, since it is wands, it's gathered experience. And yeah, um, I'm, I'm into middle age here and I feel like I've done quite enough gathering of experience. <laughs> There's some I'd rather pitch back and leave behind, but they're all with me. Um, so yeah, I end up saying thank you for acknowledging. They're not really burdens 
some of them are burdens, but uh, as it is a completion, a bringing home of all of these experiences. All of these experiences, so, but it's still really interesting to have that in the crown chakra. Okay, but um, but I get that because I'm I'm now in the process through doing my card reading. I'm really in the process of sharing or dispersing um, those life experiences. But I would say that I'm not really offering them to any sort of higher power. I'm a lot offering that to individuals and So when you look at the card reverse, so if you look at it upright, you have this energy kind of gathered at the bottom and um, splayed out at the top. That would be a very interesting upright for the crown chakra because then it's almost like um, they are being offered up or dispersed upward, um, almost released upward into um, kind of the universal current or universal knowledge or something like that. It would seem an appropriate place here if I were, you know, writing a book or something, but I'm not nor do I care to. I am instead providing this, you know, concentrating my experience and providing it to individuals um, through reading the cards. So it's more of a distillation or a concentrating and when you have the card reversed, you kind of see that you have, you know, that broader down below and it all becomes concentrated toward the top and in fact grounded. I think the grounding is still a little bit disturbing for the crown chakra. And you know when I'm looking at it, you know what I feel like doing? I feel like having a bonfire, <laughs> which seems weird, but that's what's coming to mind. And it's always those weird things that I get. It's like, well, why the heck am I thinking that? That when I do the readings for other people, they say, oh, that was so weird because that is exactly, you know, I was thinking this or I was going to do that. And you just tapped into this really weird thing. So, bonfire. I'm going to have to contemplate that one. And I'm happy, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to contemplate this a little bit more in terms of it's definitely my experiences there those ten of wands and um, another thing that happens with um, reversed cards is it can be kind of pointing the energy back at you and so I'm thinking. How is this pointing, how is this energy kind of coming back at me? Hmm. I can't seem to get 
any particular insight into that question. Again, often um, reverse cards means that an influence is passing out of your life. So to the extent that I've felt that these experiences might be a burden that seems to be passing out of my life, um, and, uh, and, and there's some truth to that, that I'm definitely seeing the benefits of being able to help others with them so that they are less of a burden and more something I am using um, even you could say and maybe this is the bonfire I was just thinking of um, to light the way for others to help them on their their path and getting and it can also mean that I am finished gathering experiences and that could be okay too that could be okay i'm not going to fuss about that although the page of wands is a little bit in denial of that because he's out there headed on another adventure so bit of a contradiction there between those two and it could be that with my desire here my my vision of having a bonfire that i'm needing to um clear some things out in in a very literal way to clear some things out um, so that I'm traveling a little lighter and thus can um, connect better be freer to connect um, in the upright position this ten of wands the guys facing downward you know so he does not have that higher connection um, at that particular moment of trying to bring all of those wands in for use, that harvest. Um, in the reversed position, he still, his, his face is more upward, but it's still lost in all of those experiences and burdens that, you know, that job, the job that he had to get done. And so, um, and his arms are wrapped around them. And so nearing completion, but not quite there yet. Not quite able to release, rest, and look up. So I am going to take that as um, not a bad card, but still kind of a blockage to what I think for the crown chakra there should be some f uplifting feeling or feeling of freedom there and it's uh, the ten of wands no that's not there that ten of wands would make more sense down there with the queen of pentacles so there's another one I might draw some cards around so we had um, for my own kind of inner exploration and work and that's why I'm finding that these these um, chakra readings are just really fascinating and valuable is because they do bring up things that um, are worth looking into further so um, I am going to look into that ten of wands reversed I am going to look into the seven of swords and what that's all about a little further even though these are influences that are supposedly going out and the queen of pentacles who I don't necessarily see as something going out um, as so much as, as just where I'm at right now so those, those are my, my chakras to explore more, is my solar plexus, my throat, and my crown chakra to do, I don't know, a little, healing might not be the right word, maybe just a little adjustment, nudges in the right direction. I wouldn't say I have any bad cards here, um, but I do have ones that have made me want to make some adjustments um, 
uh, you would call it this, maybe I need some chakra clearing, a little clearing. Um, other things I think are just a matter of time and patience. All right, so there's an example of a chakra reading. And I think, let me look at the time here. Yeah, 35 minutes. All right, this gives you some idea of how much goes into one of these readings. A lot of my readings are 20 to uh, 20, 25, 30 minutes, sometimes a little over 30. But um, these seven cards can require a lot of thought and concentration and exploration. Um, I had one that even was like 50 minutes long. So they are longer, more thoughtful readings. Alrighty. There you go. I hope this um, was an interesting example, both of chakra readings and of exploring reversals um, and of varying interpretations for the good old um, swords in the Seven of Swords and the Wands. Those two in particular, I feel, um, my interpretations could be interesting to some people. Alrighty. Thanks so much for listening. If you've made it this far, um, go ahead and visit my website as of this reading on January 24th, 2016. I do have a special on chakra readings for $20. So it's on my specials tab on my website at thistlejippy.com. <laughs> thistlegypsy.weebly.com Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.